Mr. Yantrell, it's such a pleasure and honor to meet you. And I also yeah. want to congratulate you to the Stockholm Lifetime Achievement Award that you received the other day here at the film festival. Having you know, received so many um, multitude of, of awards and being praised, what significant did this award have for you? Well, Lifetime Achievement, it's a little bit frightening, of <laughs> course, the title of the prize, because the first question you ask, are you worth this prize? The second question is, will there be anything after lifetime? But uh, as I've heard, several other well-known people have mm -hmm. got the prize mm -hmm. and survived it and are still <laughs> working. <coughs> well, I think you know it's it's a it's a symbolic um, award to praise you for for I mean the 50 years you you've. Um, so far had in your career. I mean, during these 50 years, it's so hard to summarize everything, but I'd just like to know, do you have any memorable moments or, or uh, something that, that apart from your movie making or scene or, or that you would like to share with us? I hope I have already shared them in my films. Of course. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to suddenly think of one special. No. Because I always feel awkward when I have to choose between two or three things. I find it difficult because I want them all. But, but bearing in mind um, uh, your magnitude of your career and 15 feature films, uh, short films, documentaries, and also the fact that you're, I mean, you're both the director and, and you're also usually head of cinematography, this combination what is that due to? Is, is it more, for your sense, visual artist view? Well, I, I guess it's just, a, for me, a natural continuation of my first effort with a camera. Mm. Uh, I started with still photography and then when I was 19 I borrowed a film camera and little, made a little short film. So, well, I, I after that, when I much later got the chance to direct a feature film. Mm. Uh, I just thought I, I have to work my way, and my way is behind the camera. And also, I mean, you've done so many epic, unforgettable movies, and a lot of nature and life themes like relationships, emotions, um, tragedies are, are very much sort of the soul of, of your movies and, and the soul of what you portray. Is this something that comes from you as a filmmaker, or also maybe inspi inspiration from your own life, bringing well, elements? Well, you could roughly divide my films in two groups, those which have been, I've been asked to do, or mm. people have suggested books and things, and, and the others were, uh, which have started to grow inside myself, and are the result of my my own initiative. Both those choices are, are, of course, have to be combined with your, that you have a sort of vision of yourself mm. on the subject uh, that you can identify with the person you mm. are going to portray and so on. And also bearing in mind that, I mean, everything from filmmaking to production to direction, cinematography, it's it's an artistry, it's like being a fine painter and, and you've also been referred to a lot as a film poet and so forth. Has this always been part of your character? I mean, it must come from inside of you and, and your path through life. Or is it when you have the camera that you actually become one with that? Well, when, when I started with my short films with this little 16 millimeter mm. camera, I didn't have access to sound. I had to put the sound on afterwards, and so I never took dialogue, for instance. It's like the old silent movies. Mm. You have to be very aware of the image, of course, and try to tell the story as much as possible mm. in images. So that has, I guess, become part of my character, as you say. And I, I think I, it's more natural to me the lyrical view on things than the epic view. I'm mm. not 
so good at telling stories. Because you also like, I mean, when you say, you get a feeling of silent movie, black and white, and like you say, you build the drama through, without words, which I mean is, yes, is a very uh, big talent to do. Well, for me, uh, movies were black and white mm. from the beginning mm. and uh, through a long part of my life. So uh, I, I just love the black and white image. But of course, not for every subject. Uh, color is wonderful too. Of course. So, but for this latest film, mm. I, I chose black and white mm. because it suited the subject in my point of view. In my uh, way of seeing it, it was the right thing for this film. I just wanted to also briefly, because you've been in Hollywood, Zandi's Bride, and then The Flight of the, the Eagle. Hurricane and the hurricane. How did you find Hollywood? How did you find to work in Hollywood? Well, they found me. <laughs> yeah. no, no. But did, did you enjoy the actual, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a different scenario from... It's very different, yes. No, the reason I was asked to direct the film in Hollywood was that I had finished two Swedish films, The Emigrants and The New Land, mm -hmm. which became great successes even commercially in those days. And Liv Ullman played the leading part in those films, and Max and Sudo, but, and um, that was the reason, because Liv Ullman had, had, in the meantime, become a well-known actress mm. through Ingmar Bergman mm. in, in Hollywood. Too. So when they had a film with her and Gene Hackman, Mm. I thought they could ask me to direct it. I didn't accept immediately because the, the first script was not good at all. Mm. But would you want to work in Hollywood again? Uh, no, I, I finished with that. Okay, enough <laughs> is enough. <laughs> anyway, I, I would not have been allowed to operate the camera in Hollywood. Mm. I wasn't the first time either because of union rules. Ah, of course, <coughs> they have another restriction. But um, so it was a very different experience. Mm. And I was uh, offered to direct more films there, but I, I didn't want it. But what, what are your future plans? I mean, I know that you're very much still in the go. Is there anything in the pipeline? Well, uh, it's one subject I've been thinking of for many years, but. And uh, maybe I will start to try to work on a script on that. But I don't want to say much more about it. Okay. It would be a, a subject I would work closely together with my family. Now, I'm sure you've seen lots and lots of movies during the years. Do you have like a one-liner, one movie quote that, that you either think is funny, entertaining, or, or reflects a moment? Well, there was one I saw written on a T-shirt, which I quite liked. I think it is from a film with, is it with Humphrey Bogart? I, I'm not sure. No, it's, it's, it's from a streetcar named oh, Desire. Desire. Oh, Desire. Oh, yes. And how is it? Now? Um, I, I trust the kindness of Strangers, not quite that, but I trust the I, kindness I'm of strangers. Very dependent on, on the. Uh, right. Well, it, well it's from a street, out. a street card named Desire, yeah, which is a wonderful play in a wonderful movie. Let's take another one short. Right? Yeah, do, do, you, <laughs> do you know of one? Yeah, another one. Billy Wilder's uh, with with Marilyn Monroe and what's the name of it? The Chicago Gangster. Mm -hmm. You know which yeah, one? Yeah, I think I know. I'm trying to recall it. <laughs> I never find the names when I'm... But you remember the quote? The mis no, no, not the misfits. But Anyway, mm. it's no, no one is perfect. That's the, mm. end, the end line of the film. So which film it was? I love it already. Nobody is perfect. Well, perfection is something that you master when it comes to filmmaking. And once again, 
the Stockholm Film Festival has been honored and very privileged for having you with us. Thank you. Thank you.